I used to be a prison warden at a fairly high security penitentiary. I tended to work the overnight shifts as I'm single and have grown up children, so I don't mind being there in the dead of night. Most of the prisoners were high risk, so they were often sedated at night for their own protection as well as others, believe it or not. And aside from the odd medical emergency, nights weren't too bad. It also feeds one of my other favorite hobbies, stargazing, which was why I happened to be outside that night. After I had done my rounds, checked my areas and let the other guards know I was headed outside for a quick break and a cup of coffee, I had my radio on as always, just in case there was any kind of emergency. After all, you can never be too safe. And to be honest with you, the cool fresh air was always welcome. Being trapped inside a building with 100 men and open toilets in their cells ain't exactly pleasant, no matter how long you've been working there. I'm strolling about, enjoying coffee, when I remember there was supposed to be shooting stars that night. I've seen plenty, but it never gets old. I was just standing there waiting, if I could catch one when the radio crackled. It was just static, and I did not hear any voices or calls for help. I was wondering whether I should head back, just to double check that nothing was up. When movement caught my eye just outside the perimeter of the fence. Now, since this pen is way out state, it's not unusual for animals to necessarily come wandering and have tried to get through the fence before, but that's very rare. What was unusual was the rotting stench of whatever this thing had brought with it. I could smell it all the way where I was. And there was an inmate once who had been self-harming under his jumpsuit, so no one had noticed. He'd literally been peeling off his skin and stuffing it into his pillow. We only discovered it due to the rotting stink coming out of his cell. That's what this was like. Now, I needed to know what was out there. I'm not sure what I thought it would be, but I think something like a deer, maybe, that had been mauled and possibly had an old rotten open wound. I don't know. That sort of guess seemed the most logical. Whatever it was, not only stink, but it seemed to be clicking as it walked along. Kind of like two pieces of bone were banging together. This slightly got me concerned, as I couldn't even imagine what kind of animal could be making a sound like that. Or could a possible inmate have gotten over? I unhooked my flash from my belt, shown it through the fencing where the sound seemed to be coming from. That's when I saw whatever this was. My guess is it was around seven feet tall, standing upright on two legs, but it was clearly in no way human. It was almost entirely skeletal, kind of like walking out of the grave, only this wasn't plastic or a costume, and certainly wasn't a walking skeleton. There were bits and pieces of flesh holding it together, and the bones were all misshapen and twisted, distorted, as if whatever this creature had been was massively deformed. It was literally just flesh and bone. Few strands of remaining rotting skin reminded me of the stuff we had found in that crazy inmate's cell. The stench coming off this thing was so strong, it was enough to knock me off my feet, even though I will freely admit that I was more than frightened at this time than I was alone in the cell with one of our cannibal residents. I was also mesmerized in a way. The skull looked to be possibly bovine in appearance. I only know this because my parents had a farm when I was younger, and I had seen plenty of dead cows, especially when they were sent off to the butchers. Again, it was far too large and had huge empty gaping eye sockets, which I realized were just dead. Seeing this giant distorted skeleton thing with its stench of death, pieces of decomposing and decayed skin flapping about, but seeing what I immediately likened to hell, some sort of maybe demonic, or at the very least malevolent spark in its eyes, that had been what broken my curiosity spell. I ran back into the prison. The guard in there was taking a smoke break, so I grabbed the controls for the camera and scanned around that part of the perimeter. And wouldn't you know, 
There was nothing there. To save money, they didn't record on all the cameras. That being one of them. I never told anybody about what I saw, because to be honest, if it was some sort of devil creature, then the sheer amount of evil in this place would be enough to attract Lucifer himself. I'll never forget though, that smell of rotting flesh is forever burned into my mind, and the image of this horrible sight will never leave me. A pretty good chunk of my childhood was spent playing near the river that ran back behind our house. Looking back, I kind of wondered how my parents were able to live with themselves, letting me play unsupervised next to such a considerable body of water. Even though I never flooded, I can count on one hand how many times I saw white water in that stream. DCFS today might frown upon it, but it was mostly safe. Eventually, I discovered a threat to my well-being that wasn't exactly in the water and would be years before I would see it. It was more like it would be hours before I understood that I had seen the danger all the time, but not really comprehended exactly what it was. As far as I ever knew, it was just a river that was teeming with fish and other forms of marine life, which is typical for the Midwest. It ran that nice chocolate color that you would expect from every river in the region, but it did not seem to hold back life from thriving. Sometimes, I thought I saw some pretty impressively sized fish. I didn't know if that was the norm. Once in a while, though, I would be by the river and smell something awful. Worse than anything I'd ever smelt. Worse than the garbage when it sits around for a couple of days. There were even a few times that it was so potent, I practically retched. Then, I had to stay, because I didn't want my mom to know that I had vomited. But within a day, the smell would be gone, and I resumed playing like normal. It was during one especially hot summer that the river dropped well below average, to the point to where, well, there were bald spots of exposed riverbed. As a kid, you would have thought that I had just discovered buried treasure. I found little pieces of rock and shell, and other secrets kept by the river. Even old coins and rocks that were rubbed smooth by the water, and badly corroded wristwatches. Further downstream, further down than I usually explore, I found something rather shocking. Bones. Animal bones. And every last one of them were spooky to me. Something about the way the hollow eye sockets of the skull looked. The way they made me feel like they were staring right back at me, even though there was nothing in them to stare with. The spookiness wasn't helped by the fact that each skull was submerged in a couple of inches of water, so they had that predatorial look that crocodiles do when they stalk their prey. I had no plans to go near them, at least not until I noticed something else unusual. All the fish that I was used to seeing around here, where the water levels were higher, they seemed to be resting around the bones. Once in a while, they would twitch or swim ahead a couple of inches. There is something about the fish that I couldn't quite wrap my head around, so I drew closer out of curiosity. For the first time, I noticed that I could not tell where a fish's head or its tail was placed. Something about them was all wrong. Their shapes were incredibly unusual. Actually, the word would be incomprehensible. I clambered down into the riverbed to get a closer look. I towed the edge of the water that partially submerged the bones. And as soon as the ripples from my feet reached these bones, something began to happen. The fish began working their way onto the bones until the bones were covered in writhing mass of strange fish. The fish stretched, wrapping themselves around some of the bones. The piles of bones began to move, even as some of the fish stretched, wrapping themselves around some of the joints, as if the fish manipulated them. And that's when it dawned on me, with some horrific revelation as to why I could not figure out what kind of fish I'd been looking at, and why the appearance was so confusing. They weren't fish at all. 
They were internal organs, and bits and pieces of bone and tendons and muscle tissue. Right before my eyes, this abomination took form. A thing with the skull of a buck, with shattered antlers, and the skulls of other smaller animals for shoulders. A rib cage that may have not belonged to a deer. Possibly something else. One of the arms was definitely a leg bone of something. The bones were puppeteered by contracting, writhing, throbbing organs as if they were choreographed together in an obscene ballet that made a mockery of life. I heard no voices, and there was no speech. There was nothing physically implanted in my mind, but somehow I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that whatever they were, they wanted to add my bones to the collection at the bottom of the riverbed. My organs and my flesh would swim in the waters in separate pieces until another living victim would come near, and then everything at the bottom of the riverbed would congeal together and make another kill, growing the collection of available bones and organs. I just felt that this necromantic amalgam wielded a large femur that was teeming with black insects. I never ran so fast in my life, and I slipped a bit when I was climbing the wall of the river. But under the power of adrenaline, I was able to scale it and ran until I made it home without ever looking back. I would later find out that what I smelt was the smell of rotting dead fish. I now have a miniature heart attack when I get a whiff of it. Whether it's a squirrel that crawled under the porch and died, or a nearby corpse of an animal that fell out of a tree like a bird, it doesn't matter. Any time the smell of death, it always brings back the memory of that thing that was going to add me to its collection of available body parts. I really have no explanation for how this works. How life can function in such a way. And you know what? I don't want to know. I can't even do zombie movies. And I can barely now do funerals. You wouldn't be able to do it either if death had literally stared you in the eye the way it did me. I have no way to explain anything about what I saw happen. But I stand by my experience because it forever haunts me.